Hello, my name is Jason Baum with Hastings Hotline Tools, and today I wanted to share two new products with you that we would like to offer. Uh, what you see here in front of me is a temporary load pickup, load brake switch. And we have two versions of these, the first being our single phase version, and the one right behind it here is our three phase version. So these are both vacuum bottles. Uh, the max ratings on these are also 27 kV, 400 amps, and they are rated for a 4 kA fault current. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go over our single phase version first and then coming up after, John has a demonstration for you outside uh, on how to rig and use our three phase version when it's paired up with our wire tensioning tool. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so let's start with our single phase unit here and go over the design. Um, up at the top, we've mounted our Hastings 10375 aluminum clamp and definitely been one of our more popular selling clamps here at Hastings. Moving down to the housing, uh, the housing is externally insulated and built to last. So that's due in part to the design of made with uh, high grade silicone rubber paired with the yellow portion here made of marine grade aluminum. And what this means is you can use this unit in all types of weather conditions. You never know what conditions the field may bring and when you may need to use this tool. And I wanted to highlight that because there are some tools out there that are designed to function in a similar fashion, however not built to safely operate in all types of conditions. This unit here is and you can rely on that. Next we'll move to this stud. Just having the simple stud allows you to use your own jumpers, your own clamps, or Mac heads right, right from uh, your own utility. Um, the next part before moving on, I just want to, um, I'll touch on these briefly because I'm going to go into further detail here in a second on these next features. But this here is what's called a terminate switch. You can open and close that. Moving on to the battery module with your green and red operational tabs your light housing, and then finally you have your operational indicator. This lets you know what function your unit is in. Okay, so now that we've talked about the design of the tool, let's get into the setup and operation. As you can see from this photo, we've set this up on a double dead end, primarily because this is one of the more common situations you may see or have a need for this tool. Now, the setup is pretty simple and self-explanatory. Just hang your device on one end, connect your jumper to the stud, and then connect the other end of the jumper to the other end. Moving on, I did want to remind you that this is a battery operated device and will not operate without the battery module. As you can see, this module is removable and replaceable. Next you'll notice these two tabs here, one green, one red. These are actually buttons that tell your device which function to operate. So for example, I've hung this on a closed circuit and I want to go ahead, open it and break my load. All I need to do once my setup is complete is press this green button here. Now you can see this light will begin to blink. And what this is, is a 60 second safety window. So that means I have 60 seconds to go ahead, back away, create a distance, make sure everything is still ready to go, and let the switch do all the work. Now, let's say for instance, for any reason, I don't want that switch to go ahead and open. All you need to do is pull this lever here. That will pull straight down. Leave that open and it will terminate the operation of the tool. It's also a good idea to leave this open while installing the tool so you may not accidentally trip it unexpectedly. Now we'll put that back in and I'll go ahead and show you what it looks like when this tool and switch does open. Okay, my switch has been opened, my arc has been extinguished and load broken inside the vacuum bottle. My indicator window now shows the reflective green and reads open. Now let's show you what it's like when we close the switch back in and reverse the process.
My switch has been closed back in and my load has been picked up. You can see the indicator window now shows a reflective red and reads closed. That concludes our overview of the single phase version. Now let's send it outside to my partner John who's going to give a demonstration on the three phase version. My name is John Giancanelli. I'm with Hastings Hotline Tools and today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about our new temporary switch. Now this switch in this configuration is set up for three phase. And what it does, it's hooked to our line tensioning tool. So if you don't have a way to put an open in your line on your structures on each side, you can cut an open in mid-span. That's what we've had it set up for right here. Now these three phase switches, one of the good things about them is when you switch them, they all switch at the same time. So when you suck a bubble on here, you put your jumpers up, when you cut this tail, pull it back, then open the switch. You can take one of those jumpers back and you've got a visual open in your face. Just remember, when you're working online, you've got to go by your company's safety rules, wear on your PPE, and uh, make sure you follow safe work practices. You can see this is just a fence line we put up just to show how this works. So what I'm gonna do now We've got a bubble in our wire. What I want to do is make sure that the switch is closed. So I've got a parallel path for my wire, and then I've also got in series my jumpers with the switch, my other jumper here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this wire, I'm gonna pull it back and attach it to itself, and then I can go ahead and I can close my switch. We're just attaching a double clamp on the line now. This is gonna hold my wire for me. Put the cutters on it. Now we're attaching our wire back. Now we've got space on our wire. Our jumper is secured back out of the way. I can go ahead and enable my switch. This is a defeat switch. When this down in the horizontal position, it doesn't let my module do any functions. It holds it frozen. I'm gonna head, close that back, and I'm gonna tell my switch to go ahead and open. Now that my switch is open, the next step would to be test for de-energize. I want to make sure that that is not energized before I go and hang my grounds on this other side. So I can take a proximity voltage detector like our 7701, or I can take the 6702, and I can make some volt measurements up here. Once I determine that this side is de-energized, I can go ahead and I can remove my jumper on the de-energized side, and that's going to give me my visual open. Now I can physically see that there's no path. My tensioning tool here is ready for 35 kV. So this is insulated up to 35 kV. Now I've got a visual open. I can hang my grounds and go to work. Thank you, John, for that demonstration. So before we go today, I just wanted to give you a brief introduction and outline to the wireless features of the load pickup, load break switch. Uh, when you first receive these units, you're going to get two USB flash drives. The first is going to include all of the software you'll need for the installation as well as your storage files. Um, it also includes instructions and manuals, uh, documents and materials you'll need associated with the unit. 
The next flash drive is going to be a wireless USB antenna. And this antenna you'll need to communicate with these units in the field. So you'll need to carry that with you at all times along to plug that into your laptop and then begin to communicate with these units so you can operate them. Um, once you've first installed it, you'll have uh, probably be on your desktop unless you specify it somewhere else. But this Siemens Connect a little uh, logo here will pop up. You'll double click that and it'll open up a menu. Now this is the Siemens Connect main menu. Uh, the functions here you have are set up a new ins installation, change an existing installation, operate an existing installation, access event database, and manage policy files. Now for the purposes of this video we're just going to be working with operate an existing installation. These other features here are more involved when you first set up the unit and maintaining um, records and archives of what this unit has done in the field. So we'll go ahead, open up, operate an existing installation. Once that happens, it'll open up this menu here and go through its functions. The, what this is doing, it's communicating back and forth between the units. Uh, it says that it has found two units, and that's because I only have two units here with me today. I'll go ahead and click continue, and give it a few minutes here. It'll it'll communicate and uh, open up this menu here. Now, this menu is where you're going to get all of your information, uh, all of your most useful information. So here I've designated which unit uh, is on A phase, which unit is on B phase, and as you can see, both units are open. So the current RMS values, of course, I don't have this right now on an energized source, so it'll be turned off. Um, that function you can turn on and you can receive information from there. Um, here in the external lever, what that is, that's your uh, safety release latch. So when you wanted to cancel that function, I'll just show you here. We'll go ahead and pull that open on one of the units. And now you can see one is up, one is down, just letting you know that whether that lever is, is up, down, or ready to operate. So we'll go ahead and close that back up. So now the lever is in the up position. Um, the trip count here, you can see uh, that's how many times it's been it's been operated. Each unit uh, here has been a little different. We've been playing around with them here in the shop. Um, everything's okay with the status. No, good to go. No errors. Uh, peer communications. Yes, it's communicating. Both of these units are communicating and synchronized together at the same time. Uh, running a single that should say no. So just running, if, for instance, we just have a single phase, you won't see this here. Uh, battery life, that gives me the percentage that's left on my battery modules, as well as it offers me the percentage of uh, life that my vacuum bottle has before uh, maintenance and repair is needed. So just to show you here what uh, Sometimes it can be confusing. It's, it's always a good idea to mark on the unit itself, which is uh, we're going to establish this unit as always hanging on A phase, this unit always on B phase. But at times that can get mixed up. So what this identify here is you can click flash and it will actually flash which unit is which. So once the lights on the load pickup, load brake, uh, tool itself flashes that will give you an indicator which unit is which. So of course here last fault unknown I haven't uh, put it on sources to even give it the opportunity to see a fault um, but that will show information once it your uh, your circuit your span uh, does some see a fault. Um, Moving on here, uh, let's get into the operation now. Uh, when you're ready to operate these switches, I got both open. I want to close them. I'm going to click this little box here, operate. It says control of the line will be enabled. Now, again, they're open. 
I want to close them. So click close. Please choose which devices. So you're going to choose both devices. I want to close both devices. Click that and it says once I have confirmed I will not be able to cancel these operations uh, wirelessly so that's I cannot cancel them from my laptop if they want to if they need to be canceled for safety purposes or any reason they will need to be, that uh, safety release lever or latch will need to be physically pulled on both units so you can't do that from uh, the wireless feature go ahead click yes Again, it's going to be communicating with those units, and as you can see here, both start flashing. It's going to go through its countdown, the 60-second safety window. It'll let you know how far along it is on the computer itself, and uh, we'll just wait for the countdown here and the operation. Halfway there. Almost done. It's never fun waiting for a loading bar on a on a computer no matter what you're doing. But we're almost there. And here we go. Voila. Task has been complete. My switches are now both closed. Everything's all good to go, and uh, we're back up and running. So the next I'll show you here, you can click on Event History, and this actually gives you uh, an, an archive and uh, a timeline of events that this unit has seen. So that's also helpful, gives you, gives you dates, gives you times, information uh, you'll be very useful to uh, um, record and keep track of what this unit has seen throughout its life cycle. Uh, next you can view more details here. Um, just some identification stuff mainly, serial numbers, um, always important things to keep, uh, keep on, on hand and on file. Uh, allows for any, any maintenance, any questions or anything that, that information makes things a lot smoother and, and a lot easier. Um, also includes the data manufacturer and uh, other useful information, again, when, when boiling down to unit identification and uh, um, maintenance features. So, um, But yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Pretty simple, easy to use. Uh, not not too complicated. It gives you all your information you need um, while hanging up on the line, and also uh, archives past events that that switch has uh, been through as well. So, uh, yeah, very handy tool. Wireless feature is very nice, and and allows for you to communicate with it right from the truck. So moving forward, that's all we have for you in our video today. On behalf of myself, John, and Hastings Hotline Tools, we'd like to thank you for watching. Thank you for your support, and stay safe out there. Take care.